So I want to start with climate change, right? Uh, I believe, and I know you believe, that it will be one of the defining challenges of the 21st century. I think impacts like weather events, sea levels rising, uh, islands getting flooded are going to have huge impact on the way people live and potentially have impact on health, have impact on mortality. I saw in the video that the potential of more than 9 million people dying additionally every year by the year 2050. So there's huge, huge implications of climate change. And I know you personally, and I know the Gates Foundation, is spending a lot of time both on mitigation, which is how do I reduce carbon emission, and I know you're spending time through big through energy ventures on a personal capacity, really investing in technology that can pay off, as well as around adaptation, right? How do you adopt to this challenge? And I know you're spending time on, on seeds for farmers that can survive drought. You know, the Gates Foundation is very actively involved. So I want to start off with that. I have two questions. One is, what are you personally and what is the Gates Foundation doing both around mitigation and around adaptation? And then the second question is, what can we do to learn leveraging science and technology as governments, as citizens, to be more informed about climate change and the impacts of climate change? Because we oftentimes have this debate, is it real, is it not real, what can come out of it? Yeah, so um, the, I'm actually writing a book about climate change that will come out next June. And it's to explain how we have to change the economy to get these emissions down to zero. You know, today we're emitting 51 billion tons, and that number has gone up every year. So the idea that some year it'll start going down, and some year it'll get to zero, uh, is very, very challenging. You know, most of the energy we use in the world today comes uh, from coal, natural gas, or uh, gasoline. And by the time you get to zero, you've basically gotten rid of those sources of energy and moved over uh, to nuclear, renewable, hydro, uh, which today make up less than 20%. Uh, the work on mitigation really requires immense innovation. I mean, there's innovations that people see already today. Electric cars, uh, over the next 10 to 15 years, they will outcompete gasoline cars without subsidies. So that's really good. Um, there's a new type of meat that's actually uh, made from just protein, not from a cow. Uh, that today it's a small price premium, but over time the quality and the cost uh, should beat uh, normal ground beef, and that reduces uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. We have a lot of inventions that need to be made. For example, the way we make cement and steel uh, are extremely heavy emissions activities. And yet, you know, the world is going to build more buildings uh, between now and 2060 than exist today. As the world urbanizes, uh, you know, there's no way around uh, that we're going to use a lot of steel and cement. And so, this is a very unusual thing. We have to accelerate innovation. We have to create rewards for innovation that might not come uh, if we didn't step in. Another thing that's very hard about this is that every country in the world has to participate. Uh, even if you leave out the low-income countries, you can't leave out the middle-income countries because 60% of humanity lives there and uh, as we get out, a, a lot of the emissions will be coming from those countries, not just the rich countries. And so India is kind of paradigmatic. <clears throat> Can we innovate uh, so well that as India quadruples its electricity capacity and provides air conditioning and refrigeration and lighting uh, 24 hours a day reliably to everyone in the country, uh, that that's done in such a way that it doesn't emit greenhouse gases. If you had to do it today with today's technology, you would do it with coal uh, because the intermittency and challenges of renewables are, are quite large. So, so mitigation is hard. Because we're going to have warming, we need adaptation. And there we need much better seeds. I went to see, as you mentioned, uh, the chief minister of Bihar, uh, Nitish Kumar, uh, who I've seen him over the last 10 years a lot of great uh, work that he's done in Bihar that our foundation has been able to help with. This is the first meeting I had with him, and I didn't expect it at all, where he was talking about climate change. 
I mean, when I'm in Seattle or Washington, D.C., you know, or London or Paris, you know, that's the big topic. But I was impressed that in Patna, he was saying, hey, we have a problem with climate change and trying to, you know, get our advice and help about water supplies and seeds and what they can do to minimize the problem uh, of that. So this, this is a problem that young people are beginning to wake up to. Over the last five years, the energy behind it uh, has gone up dramatically. Uh, some people think it, it's easy to solve, you know, that you could solve it in 10 or 20 years. I wish that was true. We need to engage in a plan that will take 30 or 40 years uh, to get this done. So, uh, you know, I'm putting a lot of money and time into it because the people who would suffer the most are the poorest, uh, the poorest uh, in the north of India, in Africa, all over the world. It's the farmers uh, who will bear the, the brunt, even though they did nothing to cause the problem.